Okay, what I want to do in this video is I want to show you how you can use linear algebra to balance chemical equations. And as a disclaimer, I'm not a chemist, I'm a mathematician, um, but this is a straightforward methodology for using a mathematics to do that for you. So in the example that I'm going to look at, um, the idea is you're burning some propane gas, and so you get um, propane out, uh, you take propane, you add that to the oxygen, and out you get carbon dioxide and water. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out how many moles of each of these you will get so that this is balanced. So we don't know how many moles of propane, I'll call that X1. We don't know how many moles of oxygen we'll need, that's X2, or we'll get to balance the equation. We don't know X3, the moles of carbon dioxide, or X4, the moles of water. And so we can set this up as a system of equations. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to think of having a vector that has three components. Its first component is going to be the number of atoms of carbon I have for any of the particular um, parts to this equation. And then similarly, hydrogen and oxygen. So if we kind of break this down, I'm going to have X1 times well, I look at that propane, and I say I have three atoms of carbon, I have eight atoms of hydrogen, and I have zero atoms of oxygen. I look at the oxygen, so that's plus X2, my unknown, and so what do I have? I have no atoms of carbon, no atoms of hydrogen, and I have two atoms of oxygen, and that's got to be equal to the unknown number of moles X3 of carbon dioxide and so what do I have in carbon dioxide? Well I have one, mo uh, one atom of carbon, no atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen and finally X4 times in that water what do I have? I have no atoms of carbon, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And so this is what we call a vector equation and in order to solve the system of equations, we like to make it homogeneous. And homogeneous just means that everything on this side, we're going to push to the other side and make the right-hand side of the equation zero. So I'm going to carefully do that. I guess I'm going to, first let me copy this and pull it on over to my next slide. Oh, I think I've already done it here. All right, so... I've got x1 times 380 plus x2 times 002 equals x3102 plus x4021. I move everything to the other side, so the x3 term and the x4 term, these terms, when they get moved to the other side, of course, become negatives, as you see here. Negative there, negative there. And then I can collect those together in what we call a matrix equation, because this is what we call the vector equation. And so from that, we can get a matrix equation just by making each of these vectors the columns of a coefficient matrix. And so when we do that, we get down here A times X, which is a vector of unknowns. The unknowns are the number of moles for each of those components, so X1, X2, X3, and X4. Then on the right-hand side, we get the zero vector. And let me write that properly. So we have a zero vector, and it has three components um, of zeros. Okay, so when we solve that um, system of equations and we use Gaussian elimination, I'm not going to go through those steps here, but we get on this side is we get that x4 is a free variable because what we notice immediately is we have three equations and we have four unknowns. That means we're going to have some freedom to choose one of the variables. So I'm going to let x4 be equal to s as you see there. Then x3 becomes 3 fourths s x2 becomes 5 fourths s, and x1 becomes 1 fourth s. And so if I remember, what I want is, I'm talking about moles, so I want them to be whole numbers. So I'm going to choose s to be equal to 4, and when I do that, I get x3 is 3, x2 is 5, and x1 is 1. And so now I know how many moles of each of those components I have, so I'm able to balance my chemical equation as C3H8 plus 5 O2s, will give me three carbon dioxides plus four waters.